Hello everybody, I'm Richard Oldner and welcome to the channel. By now, you, you know the drill. Come on, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when we do all this testing because you know you'll want it. Let's take a look once again at our Gen 7 8.1 496 cubic inch big block Chevy. Back in part one, we did a cam upgrade. I was crazy enough to install a Gen 6 camshaft and a Gen 7 motor. All we had to do is change the firing order and voila, we got lots more power. But guess what we want? More power. That's right. Let's take a look at maybe an induction upgrade. How about a new intake manifold? And actually, this isn't even a new intake manifold. It's still the old stock intake manifold, but it's been heavily modified. Can we gain more power by modifying the factory long runner intake? There's only one way to find out. Let's head to the dyno. Okay guys, we have our 8.1 liter up on the dyno with the stock intake manifold and throttle body. The question is, will it respond to a bigger throttle body and a better intake manifold? So we're gonna try exactly that. We're gonna run it with the stock intake manifold. Then I'm gonna put the modified version that I got from my buddy Amos, who supplied this motor to begin with. So we're gonna do a modified version of the stock intake manifold. The question is, is it worth any power? Back in part one, as a recap, installing the ZZ502 camshaft, pick power up to 464 horsepower and 582 foot-pounds of torque. That was with a stock intake. Okay, guys, we've run the stock intake manifold and the stock throttle body. We have all of our power numbers with our ZZ502 camshaft. Now we're going to go ahead and perform an intake swap, so watch while we swap the intake. Okay, we've got our harness disconnected. We still have them on the injectors. And what I'm gonna to try to do is lift off the injectors and harness and rail all as one assembly and put it over the top with fuel in it. <laughs> Fingers crossed. So as it turns out, lifting the whole assembly off and having the injectors come out of the intake manifold was wishful thinking. Basically what I did is just get fuel everywhere. So I gotta clean that up. But we're gonna start our intake swap and take the fuel rail out of the way. Then we'll pull out the injectors individually because those are gonna stay with the rail. We can put all that back in the new manifold and then we're gonna pull this manifold. The modified intake supplied by famous Amos Garcia included a three-tiered approach to improving airflow. First, he cut off and lowered the plenum floor, both to increase plenum volume and move it away from the inlet of the intake runners. He then removed the internal baffles in the factory manifold and then installed a much larger throttle inlet opening, enough to accept a 102 millimeter fast LS throttle body. Yeah! Time to put these babies back in. So tighten up the, get the injectors in, tighten the rail up. So 
So now we're gonna fill the dyno tower full of water, turn the fuel pressure on. You guys let me know if fuel sprays out of here. And we'll know if we did it right. That's the sweet sound of the music. 59 PSI, everything's holding. It's ready. Gotta stick the throttle body on and make some noise! So we got our linkage all hooked up. Now we're gonna go in and check and make sure that we got wide open throttle. Yeah, wide open throttle, whoa. Okay, now it's time to make a pull with the ported intake manifold. Let's we'll see how it does. Like uh, 18 to 20 horsepower. Pretty good size gain. Okay, guys, here we go. The dyno results finally for the intake swap on our 8.1 liter Gen 7 big block. We want to start out. I'm going to recap a little bit with what we did in part one. So, this is the stock motor with the stock intake manifold and the stock camshaft. It made 422 horsepower and 546.6 foot pounds of torque. Here's what happened when we put our ZZ 502 camshaft in it. Peak power jumped up to 464 horsepower and 582 foot-pounds. And in part one, you'll notice many guys pointed out, I said, or I put down 482. That was just me me uh, hitting the four instead of the five on the, on the keys. But it is 582 foot-pounds, and that really is our starting point because that is with the stock intake manifold. So we'll get rid of our stock cam here. Here is what happened when we put the ported intake manifold in place of the stock intake manifold, and both combinations were run with that ZZ502 cam. And you can see pretty good power gains. We went from 464 horsepower to 482.7 horsepower, made peak power at the same RPM. Not surprising, we'll go into that in just a minute. 482.7, so 483. So we gained almost 20 horsepower, 18, 19-ish horsepower. Peak torque was also up from 582 up to 597 so we're inching very very close to that 600 foot pound mark and maybe we could have done it with a radius entry or a little bit colder maybe throw a couple of degrees of timing there near the torque peak but it's interesting to note uh and i'll tell you why it made peak torque and peak horsepower at the same rpm we just made more of everything uh, amos when he did the manifold as i mentioned in the description about what the modifications were you got more inlet air going in. The runner length is exactly the same. There was no porting done to the runner length. And that is kind of the critical element of intake manifold designs. That's why we saw what we saw. And a lot of guys will point to, well, the heads are holding it back. I honestly don't think at this power level, given the flow rate of the stock heads, we can make a lot more power with the stock heads. What we need to do now is change the runner length and possibly the flow of those runners. And we can make even more power at a 
higher engine speed. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I got more 8.1 testing coming up. Got some carbureted stuff versus some fuel injected stuff. So make sure when I come out with part three, check it out.